Now, uh, I will tell you about the oscilloscope. Okay. And in oscilloscope, before I show you the uh, uh, actual functioning of the oscilloscope and the purpose of this individual controls which you can see over here, okay. let me just uh, go over uh, to this uh, um, uh, to the writing pad and I can uh, just briefly explain that what is there inside an oscilloscope because perhaps that will give you a better understanding as to what is there inside and then you will be able to appreciate the controls of the oscilloscope in a better way. Here I will tell you that what is there inside an oscilloscope. Essentially oscilloscope has got a CRT. So, this is the CRT and here there will be a uh, cathode and there will be some heaters okay, uh, and this will emit electrons okay. and the electron has to ultimately the flow of electrons will be so that when the electron ultimately they it reaches this screen okay, this screen is actually coated with phosphors. So, that means to say that when the electron beam that hits the phosphors then it illuminates. Okay. But what we are using this, this instrument we are using for the purpose of observing the waveforms of various circuits. Okay. So, we want to keep the waveform that at least it should be visible to our eyes. So, if the electron beam hits at one particular point and the uh, and, and immediately it shifts to another point and uh, that point gets illuminated like that we will not be able to make out anything because uh, then that bombardment of the electrons with the phosphors that will take for such a brief time that we will not be able to see anything. So, these phosphors are actually made of uh, materials which are having uh, significantly high persistence. High persistence means at least to the extent that our eyes can integrate a feeling of as if to say a waveform has been fully uh, shown okay, from the left hand side to the right hand side of the screen and we should be able to see the waveform properly that is the uh, idea which uh, we uh, want to have. So, that is why this phosphors are made with uh, good persistence of vision. Okay. Now, if say we heat this uh, cathode okay, using um, uh, some heater coil, okay, in that case electrons will be emitted and electrons will flow directly and it will heat only the center of the screen, but obviously we do not want the electron beam to heat the center of the screen all the time because there the problem will be that in no time I mean if a, a continuous electron beam is uh, hitting the center of the phosphor screen only in no time the uh, phosphor at that particular uh, point will burn out. So, we will have a center burning effect. So, what we have to do is to properly direct the beam in whichever direction we want to and to do that we have some deflection mechanisms in the CRT. So, we have some deflection plates or it can be done using deflection coils also. So, deflection coils or deflection plates whatever it may be okay. uh, say we have one set of deflection uh, plates or coils kept like this and exactly 90 degree to it. So, if one is directing it horizontally the other pair of coils or the other pair of uh, plates okay, that will uh, direct the beam vertically. So, one set of plates or coils directs it horizontally, another set directs it vertically. So, that using the combination of the horizontal plates and the vertical plates, it is possible for us to move the beam to anywhere in the screen. So, what we do is that supposing you think that only the horizontal coil is existing. Okay. Supposing only the horizontal coils are existing. So, what happens is that using this horizontal coil, supposing I change the voltage from 
uh, some negative voltage to positive voltage. Say I apply a waveform like this, say, say this is my DC level 0 volts and supposing I apply a waveform that goes from say minus something say minus 1 volt or minus 2 volts to plus 2 volts. Okay. Now, what happens that when it is minus 2 volts, the coil voltage is minus 2 volts, it will direct the electron beam to the extreme left possibly. Uh, and when we give plus 2 volts, then the electron beam will be directed to extreme right. So, if I continuously keep uh, changing this voltage from minus 2 volts to plus 2 volts continuously, then it will go from the left hand side to the right hand side. Again, after it goes from minus 2 volts to plus 2 volts, if I immediately bring back the voltage to minus 2 volts, then what happens? Then the electron beam goes to the extreme left hand side once again. So, when we observe on the screen, we will be observing something like this that supposing I draw the screen only and say that this is how the beam moves. Okay. So, with extreme negative voltage, the beam is here and then when it is 0 volt, it comes to the center of the screen. When it is plus 2 volts, it goes to the uh, right hand side of the screen and as I had shown here that from plus 2 volts, we are immediately bringing uh, the uh, voltage to minus 2 volts, which means to say that once the beam reaches this extreme end, that is extreme right hand side end, the beam is immediately brought back to the extreme left hand side end. And if we have a waveform that goes like this continuously, that means to say that after it reaches plus 2 volt, it is suddenly brought back to minus 2 volts uh, and then once again it increases linearly from minus 2 volt to plus 2 volt, then again a drop like this, then again like this. Can you see that this waveform that we are drawing that looks like a sawtooth, right? It looks like a sawtooth. So, we call this thing as sawtooth voltage. Okay. So, we apply horizontal on the, on the horizontal plates or the, on the horizontal deflection coils, we will be actually applying a sawtooth voltage. So, that what we are doing is that the beam we are uh, bringing from the left hand side to the right hand side that is changing linearly and then once it, once it goes to the right hand side, immediately it is brought back to the left hand side. But what happens is that in practice, it is very difficult to generate such a sharp fall. Okay. No matter whatever good electronic circuits you may try out, there will be some finite time which may be there. Like I may have that up to plus 2 volts it goes like this and then maybe a few microseconds or so it takes for it to come down from minus 2 volts to plus 2 volts. So, then what happens? Then the that amount of that finite time which may be there, however small it may be, you will be observing as if that the beam, okay, the electron beam while retracing, there will be a faint trace that is left behind. Okay. Actually, the oscilloscope circuit is so adjusted that this part of the waveform, which is called as the flyback time, during flyback time, uh, the screen is blanked out. So, that you cannot see the uh, beam uh, retracing backwards. Okay. Uh, so, all that we are going to see in the screen is that a straight line. Supposing we feed a signal like this onto the horizontal plate only, nothing in the vertical plate, we will see a continuous straight line that is uh, that, that will be shown. Okay. Now, uh, how do we display the waveform then? Because we want to display a sine wave with which we are carrying out the experiment. So, what we do is that there will be another set of plates. Okay which will be uh, there horizontally. So, I, I can I mean because it is a three dimensional thing means there will be another set of plates which will be just uh, at right angles to this okay, which uh, we can use as the vertical deflection plates. So, uh, now uh, we keep applying this kind of sawtooth voltage or this is also referred to as sweep voltage and why is it called sweep? Because you can see that it is sweeping the electron beam from the left hand side to the right hand side. So, it is also referred to as the sweep voltage and we do the sweeping using sawtooth. Now, uh, when it is actually going uh, to the um, right hand side, if uh, 
uh, at the same time we apply let us say a sinusoidal voltage at the, uh, um, uh, the vertical deflection plate. Then what happens that the beam movement in such a case will not be exactly horizontal like this, okay, because the vertical uh, deflection plate will now influence the journey of the beam. So, as the sine wave voltage changes, supposing the sine wave uh, uh, changes from positive uh, from 0 voltage to the positive voltage and then it again goes to the negative voltage, then it will trace out like this. The beam itself will make a journey of this nature, so that you can see what you will see on the oscilloscope screen is a sine wave. Okay. And if say for example, I just give you a uh, figure that supposing this sawtooth voltage is operating at 1 kilohertz frequency. Okay. So, so you can say that it, it will take 1 millisecond to complete its journey. right? Uh, now, we also apply another 1 kilohertz sine wave. Supposing it is a 1 kilohertz sine wave that we apply over here. So, you will see that this also takes 1 millisecond. So, in 1 millisecond of time when the beam goes from left to the right, this uh, sine wave also completes one cycle so that you will see exactly one cycle of a sine wave. Now, instead if you are uh, feeding let us say if you are feeding a uh, 2 kilohertz sine wave instead of 1 kilohertz, then what happens? Then you will be seeing uh, 2 complete cycles of a sine wave. Why? Because uh, 2 kilohertz means it is 0.5 milliseconds, so that we will be completing 2 cycles. So, it will now look like this that if I uh, show the screen once again, okay, then it will be that uh, this is the horizontal line, this is the middle. So, within this there will be uh, one cycle and then again from here to here another cycle, so that two cycles will be there. Now, I tell you that uh, supposing it is not 1 kilohertz or not 2 kilohertz exactly, supposing it is somewhere in between. Say, it is 1.3 kilohertz and we want to show the waveform. So, obviously, you can well understand that 1.3 kilohertz means and with the sweep still existing at 1 kilohertz, okay, we will uh, not be able to show the complete waveform. So, then what happens that perhaps a part of the waveform will be shown like this, okay. uh, say I draw another kind of situation where we will be having say this is the screen and say a sine wave is stressed like this that it uh, goes from here to here okay and say here it just makes some incomplete cycles so it ends here so where the beam will be the beam will be here and but the sine wave is a continuously running sine wave so what will happen is that it will start I mean the next journey it will start because the sweep will bring it back immediately to this place okay, and the next journey will start something like this. So, if the uh, point from which the sine wave starts okay, that changes with every trace okay, uh, and since the traces are happening very fast what you will see on the screen is that as if to say nothing is stable, okay, the waveform is uh, running around okay, in its own way and we are not able to uh, make it static so as to take any readings with the uh, measurement. Okay. So, what we do for that purpose? Actually for that purpose, the oscilloscope has got certain very sophisticated features which are called as the triggering of the oscilloscope okay. and there are some trigger controls also available and using the trigger controls, we can exactly make the uh, waveform okay, going from one place to another and only with the signal it gets triggered, so that it just starts the next journey from the same starting point once more, so that we will observe the waveform like a static waveform. So, this is called as a triggering. So, this is another beautiful feature of the oscilloscope, because without triggering it, it will not be possible for you to take any measurements. Okay. Now, uh, what happens is that so, we have the sweep voltage on the horizontal side okay, 
and for the vertical deflection plate you just have to feed whichever voltage you want to monitor. Okay. If you are monitoring a sine wave, feed a sine wave, if you want to monitor a triangular waveform, feed a triangular waveform, if you want anything else just feed that particular signal whichever signal you want to use. Okay. And many a times what you would like to do is that you would uh, like to simultaneously observe the input and the output of the circuit. So, what we do? If we have a single beam available in the oscilloscope that becomes a very difficult thing because with single beam how many times shall we switch over? I mean uh, once show the input then again take the um, uh, jack out and then uh, give the output. So, keep uh, seeing all the time that will be very inconvenient because we may like to compare the input with the output. So, that is why the oscilloscope beams are made as multiple beam and the ones which you will be mostly using in the oscillo uh, in, in the laboratory they are all dual beam oscilloscope. So, dual beam means there will be two similar beams okay, two, two, two sets of beams which will be available. So, that to the beam A you can feed the um, input signal and to the beam B uh, you feed the output signal or whichever point you want to use for comparison. So, that you can have a direct comparison between two beams and uh, the, the sweep that makes a very common control of both the beams. Okay. Both the beams will be having identical sweep voltage operating. So, that both the beams beam A and beam B they will operate with identical time scale. Now, uh, this sweep voltage that I was discussing little while back if instead of 1 kilohertz you make it 10 kilohertz then what happens then the travel time of the beam will be faster. So, then we will be able to uh, show the, uh, the uh, those kind of waveforms okay, where uh, the uh, it, its time period is much less 10 kilohertz means the time period will be uh, only uh, uh, 0.1 milliseconds. Okay. So, whichever waveforms are falling uh, fitting well within that you can show those things. So, by varying this sweep frequency it is possible for you to make a timing adjustment. Okay. So, if you are adjusting the knob of the uh, sweep voltage actually I will show you the controls okay, the timing control. The timing control actually it is done in steps okay, that uh, you can have 0.1 milliseconds per division, you can have 1 millisecond per division, 10 milliseconds per division, 20 milliseconds per division like that there are I mean there, there is a knob which will be able to control which I will come uh, uh, soon to that. Okay. And on the other side of it wherever you are having the uh, um, uh, um, I, I mean the signal the actual voltage you want to monitor which you are feeding to the um, vertical axis there you may like to adjust its voltage because you may like to cover the entire screen or supposing you want to show a part of the screen only because whenever especially if, whenever you are using both the beams together okay, you may have to adjust uh, both the amplitudes as smaller amplitudes. So, that you can I mean in one screen itself you can compare both. So, accordingly you can vary the voltage which will be used only for showing on the oscilloscope. I mean, you are not changing your circuit voltage, but for displaying purpose you are adjusting the voltage settings. So, that how many volts you are showing in every one small division of the oscilloscope that can be shown by the voltage adjustments. So, the major things which will be there in the oscilloscope is the adjustment of these voltage knobs which will depend upon uh, what voltage you are really feeding from your experimental setup. Okay. And then the timing which again will depend upon which frequency waveform are you showing from the um, uh, setup. Okay. And uh, the triggering you, 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 uh, these days the uh, most of the modern oscilloscopes they are having auto triggering facilities. So, if you are doing it with auto uh, 90 percent of the time you will not be facing any problem, but in case you face problems there are manual adjustments of the triggers that, uh, that is also available. Okay. So, let me now go over to the oscilloscope okay, and uh, we will uh, feed the signal from the signal generator which I have already explained to you and then you will be able to see that uh, how we can exercise all these different controls timing adjustments, voltage adjustments actually how we do it that we will show after going near the oscilloscope.